chemistry classrooms around the world. Teachers often use an experiment called the Wush rocket to show complete combustion. Just like this. Essentially, what's going on is the combustion of alcohol vapour in the bottle, producing some nice lights and a nice sound. This is a cool experiment, but I will make it better. Roll the intro! Unfortunately, I drank all my alcohol, so I'm going to use butane as the fuel for this rocket. To be honest, this doesn't require much setup, so I'm just going to go outside and start. The first step is to fill the bottle with gas, and I'm using a camping stove attachment to do this. The exit area of the bottle is fairly large which means that the exhaust jet speed will be pretty low. So, I made this. It's essentially just an isolator valve hot glued into a bottle cap, but it reduces the area through which the uh, exhaust gases will flow. So hopefully I'll get a better jet. I found that adding a puff of air really helped with the ignition. But not in this case. RIP. Initially, I positioned the igniter inside the bottle, but this doesn't seem to be very effective, and that's not how teachers in the classrooms ignite their wish rockets. So I'm going to switch to an external ignition source. To make the exhaust flames more visible, it's sensible to film this all at night. But the trouble is, in the UK at the moment, it's minus one degrees at night. That's degrees Celsius. Why would you use Fahrenheit? Anyway, it's really cold. And you know what that means? It means the butane tank doesn't output as much gas. And it also means that the butane lighter doesn't light very well either. My solution to this problem is to run the tank and the lighter under a tap of warm water, not hot water because I don't want to boil this off, warm water, to bring it back up to a sensible temperature. <laughs> that first bottle is pretty good, but can it be better? Look at this syrup bottle. Look at that exit. That's perfect for what I'm trying to do. The only problem is this bottle's full of syrup and there's only one solution for that. Oh, let's go outside. I don't like the fact that my igniter is in the line of the flames coming out of the bottle. So I made a hole in the bottle and have put the lighter here using hot glue. So 
sadly, after a few tests, nothing was happening. I mean, earlier I said that I shouldn't be igniting the things inside the bottle. But I think this is a separate issue. So the problem, as per usual, is with the lighter. So the spark won't work anymore. So I found this really old one. Hopefully, it'll work better. This is the ignition I want to finish on. And it may not be immediately obvious why. Yes, this was quite bright, it was colourful, it was good. But something else happened, and I'm going to explain that to you now. I'll show you the clip again, but in super slow-mo. And pay very close attention to the very end of the sequence, because that's the really interesting thing. Whilst the jet here is excellent, I in fact want to talk about the three reignition sparks at the end. To best describe my theory of what those sparks are, I've created a simulation in Desmos. When the flame front hits the back of the bottle, I believe it sends a shockwave forwards, and that is what this is illustrating. Ignition events are then induced by the shockwave and its echoes. This explains the bright sparks that we see. Those are butane whoosh rockets. Pretty impressive, but I think I can do more with these. I think I can get them to produce MAC diamonds. Now, some people may say, that's not possible from this. No way can you do that, but I'm gonna try and I'll show you that in the next video. So, you know what to do? Like, subscribe, all those normal things, and see you in the next video. Thank you.